Hey guys, it's MJ, the Student Secretary, and in this video, I want to talk about multi-manager madness. Now, in your textbook, when it comes around, you know, the multi-manager, you'll normally see the benefit is that they increase diversification, and the disadvantage is that they add another layer to the costs. What I'm going to be doing in this video is I'm going to be going a lot deeper into this problem. So what I've got is a little, a little diagram. Ooh, let me try and get this diagram sorted here. Yeah. Okay, so we have our little pension fund, and normally the pension fund comes and it either puts its money with fund A or puts its money with fund B. But there is something else known as a fund of funds, and this is a fund that invests in other funds, another word for a multi-manager. Now, what is really interesting about the fund of fund is that it's kind of like playing tennis on both sides of the court, because what they're going to be trying to do is they're going to be trying to take the money from the pension fund, they're going to be trying to get the assets, in which case they are competing against the other funds because all the funds are fighting for the investments. But if they win, they're then going to be investing in these other funds here. So it's a little bit weird because on the one hand, they're competing against these funds and on the other hand, they're investing into these funds. So they're both competitor and client to the other funds, which is a little bit weird. Okay, but now what we need to know about the funds of funds, especially when the investment consultant comes and talks to the pension fund, is that the fund of funds, it's this whole idea of active investing. And I think I'll make more videos explaining why active investing isn't as great as it's made out to be. Um, there's this other thing known as passive investing where you invest via an index, and a lot of evidence is backing up that that's the better way to go. However, a fund of fund is very much still in the belief or the philosophy of active management. Remember, their, their belief is that we can identify tomorrow's winners with consistency. So they need to believe that these funds can outperform and that they can choose which one's going to do better. Which, like I said, oops, sorry, it's not the best thing because there is a lot of evidence supporting index funds at the moment. But anyway, let's move on. One of the, the big disadvantages or one of the big problems with fund of funds is that they can release multiple portfolios. And this gets a little bit difficult to detect whether they're doing it maliciously because they could be saying each pension fund could be giving them a specialist mandate which requires them to create another fund. Or what they do is they might just create for every pension fund a different fund regardless. And then what they do is over time, the, the funds that do well, they highlight and say, oh, look how great we did with these. And the funds that didn't do too well, they either ignore them or they close them and they transfer the other pension funds into the winning funds. And it's a little bit, yeah, you know, it's a little bit sneaky, sneaky. But what they can then do with that is they can then have marketing literature saying, look how well our one funded. Meanwhile, they had 10 funds, only one beat the market. And then they're like, oh, look how great we are. So that is something that a pension fund needs to be aware of and an investment consultant should be telling the pension fund. The problem though is that there's a little bit of a conflict of interest because sometimes the investment consultant um, works for a company or, or underneath a, a corporate uh, entity that also owns a fund of fund and also owns these funds over here, which means all three of these guys are working for the same corporate entity, which kind of breaks down the whole integrity and the whole independence. And this conflict of interest you know, what it does, it affects the distribution of their products and it affects the mix of their underlying assets. And because, yeah, like I said, there's this, there's this inappropriate incentives or pressures to, to invest in the same corporate entity because you want the business under the same brand so that you can make more money. Um, also, a big problem with these fund of funds is the way the, the fees are done. So fees are still based on assets under management, which... I mean, there's a whole philosophy why it shouldn't be like that because then it means asset managers' main goal is not to outperform the market but to just get more and more assets under their care. And you can see a lot of asset managers love to brag about this. They say, oh, I'm this asset manager and I have $700 billion under management or I'm Joe Smith and I have $200 billion under, under management. Very rarely do they say, oh, I'm Joe Smith and I've got a Sortino ratio of four or you know, I'm this asset manager and my risk return adjusted um, performance is, you know, that's the more important thing. But they very typically quote 
the amount of assets they have under management because that's how their fees are related. But now what normally ha happens with normal funds is that there's like a 2% fee and then there is a performance fee. If you beat the benchmark, which is this guy over here, um, we will take 10% or 20% of the amount above it. However, when it comes to fund of funds, what they sometimes do is they share in the performance fee. So let's say fund B does very well and fund A does very badly. Then this fund, the fund of fund, gets some of the performance incentive from fund B, gets nothing from fund A, but even though overall the fund of fund hasn't beaten the index fund, they're still getting a performance fee from this fee over here. So that's also a little bit dodgy. Um, they can also generate hidden forms of revenue. Uh, fund of fund could come here and say to the pension fund, hey, we will supply your administrative system. Pension fund's like, okay, that's pretty cool, you know, less, less complexity. Um, but then the charge for the administrative fee is, or the administration system is going to be based on assets under management. And a wise investment consultant would say, no, don't do that. Rather go with a normal administrative company where you're paying a fixed fee because you're going to be way overpaying to this fund or fund. Okay, so that is <laughs> that's a little bit crazy. But essentially what you're doing by going to a fund or fund is you're paying for manager selection. But it does get a little bit complicated because there is now another party in the value chain. And I mean, I'm really cut out, if you see from my, one of my last videos, you know how deep this chain actually goes. And that was a very simplified um, version of it. So what we need to, or what, what pension funds need to, to realize is that by going to a fund of fund, it might make manager selection simpler, but they still have that fiduciary responsibility that if the money is you know, mismanaged, it's still their problem for the trustees. But now what pension funds should do when they come to fund of funds is ask them various questions. They should ask them, how are managers identified? So, you know, is this manager better than that manager? And how do they consider when various, like let's say, analysts, some really hotshot analyst works for fund A, makes them a lot of money, and then he moves to fund B? You know, how do fund of funds take that into consideration, that key personnel are moving between managers? Also, if they get given 100 million, how do they allocate, you know, and they're going to go with fund A and fund B, how do they allocate that weighting? Is it... Uh, equally weighted or how do they how do they do that also how many hours a year are they spent on the due diligence of each manager remember that's that's probably the biggest advantage of the fund of funds is that the pension fund or the investment consultant only needs to consider one fund and say okay these guys are legit and then the fund of fund is supposed to go and check each fund in the universe to determine if they are legit and then invest in them but Pension funds need to ask, you know, how much experience do these multi-managers have and how well do these multi-managers understand the investment process of each manager. Then, like I said, they should also ask how are fees determined with each of the underlying managers and what happens if, let's say, fund A is the best and um, but their fees are too high because that's another little potential benefit of the fund of funds is they might come to these guys and say, listen here, not only am I getting money from this pension fund, but I'm getting money from this other pension fund share as well. So we're going to get lots of assets under management. Can you guys reduce your fees? And a lot of the time these funds say, yes, we will reduce the fee in order to get more of the business. And then the fund of fund, that extra fees that they save, they then keep for themselves. But now what happens if fund A is brilliant and they say, well, no, stuff you because we're doing so well, we don't have to you know, lower our fees. What does the fund do? Do they just then ignore that fund and only invest in the others, which is then detrimental to the other pension funds? Or do they say, okay, no, fine, we'll still go with you guys, but then the other funds are going to be like, hey, that's unfair. So how is that whole relationship managed? Now, one of the other big benefits or one of the big benefits uh, said in the textbook is that fund of funds offer diversification. That is not always the case. Sometimes diversification is just a nicer word for dilution, especially if this manager is betting on one share and this manager is betting on the other share. What You're not diversifying, you're just diluting both of the positions and what you're doing is you're just paying a lot of asset manager fees and you're not getting any return. And after the fees, it's going to have a massive performance drag and this index fund is going to be outperforming um, your fund of funds. 
So that's something to consider. Um, something else that your textbook probably won't tell you, which I think is quite a big benefit of Funder Funds, is they might actually give you access to funds that are soft closed. So Fund A might have been doing so well that they say, listen here, we don't want to deal with any new investors. Um, so we're closing our fund to new investors and we're only going to be accepting funds from our existing investors just to save on admin and all those various things. Then the pension fund won't be able to directly invest in Fund A because they would be a new investor. The only way they would be able to access Fund A is through a fund of fund. So that's a massive advantage that you must mention in an exam and is probably not stated anywhere in your textbook. Um, other than that, I mean, you know, we've already spoken that they might be able to negotiate better fees. They might be able to give better liquidity depending on what the various lockout rules of the various funds. So that's going to depend very much on circumstances. Um, yeah, so liquidity is very dependent, but you're always going to get marks if you mention that. The fund or fund might have a lower minimum investment required, especially in the cases of hedge funds. So hedge funds are like, we will only accept you if you pay us you know, $10 million or more, where the fund or fund might have a $1 million minimum investment and then still have access to these other funds because they're getting it from multiple pension funds. So that is something to, to consider. But at the end of the day, it's very important to realize that the, this whole thing of multi-managers, I mean, in my, my opinion, it is madness because you're paying more fees. You're, you're adding a layer of complexity and not only are you believing that the market is active or inefficient, that these fund, different funds you know, can actually generate that extra alpha, but you're believing that you can choose the superior um, fund manager. So that's why at the end of the day, despite having all this discussion, I still think it is superior if you don't bother with asset managers and analysts and all those stuff of guys. Just go directly to the index fund. It's cheaper and it's probably going to give you much better returns in the long run. But that's just my personal opinion. And uh, remember, this is an educational video. It's not financial advice. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comment section below. Thanks, guys. Cheers.